Vivi Lin now joins us from Shanghai with more there. Thank you, Mike. Canada's rejection of the patronage bid raised fresh doubts about the country's willingness to accept foreign investment, especially in the energy sector. And you're right about it. Now all eyes are on the Sinook Nexon deal, uh, which is even more high profile. The PMI flash numbers were just released minutes ago. Vivi Lin is in Shanghai with more. Hi, Vivi. Hello, Phil. Yes, the uh, headline reading of the flash PMI standing at 50.4 in November. Uh, that's a 13-month high. That is compared to the reading of 49.1 for October. Uh, the data is designed to give an early snapshot of the month's factory activity. China's central bank governor Zhao is hinting on changes for China's monetary policy. For more, we go straight to Vivi Lin, who is in Shanghai. Hello, Vivi. Hello, Phil. Uh, the central bank governor, Zhou Xiaochan, gave us some directions to China's future monetary policies over the weekend. One message loud and clear is that inflation will remain a long-term risk for the PBOC, especially at a time when the Chinese economy is making a transition and deeper financial reforms are taking place. Uh, the current concerns are the uh, government's drive to prop up growth could again lead to economic overheating. And also one of the top risk events this week was the unveiling of China's new leadership team. The message is clear that China new leaders will embrace more reforms but that is affecting investors risk appetite because of lingering concerns over what kind of changes the new leadership is going to make it is a very interesting story um, the hero here is China mainstream media which will invest 300 million dollars to produce and distribute 10 films or all in English to attract international audience um, the idea is to combine Hollywood talents and stories with a strong China element something like Kung Fu Panda but made in China it's places like this wet market in Beijing they are in the forefront of China's battle with inflation. Food prices are sky high for many of the city's residents. Around a third of the country's soaring inflation is caused by rising food prices. So how does the housewife cope? A year ago, Lina could feed a family of four on 40 yuan a day. Now that amount would fill just half her shopping basket. Pork is a Chinese staple, so important to the economy, in fact, that CPI is often called the China Pig Index. The price is up by around 60% in the last few months alone. And as far as some economies are concerned, that is not going to ease anytime soon. But there is one thing the government could do to ease the pain. They want to set up a system in China to cover more people, more low-income households, uh, and link their subsidies to inflation. So inflation goes up, the low-income households get more subsidies. Without the diversification China needs, a hard landing could be on the cards. And that is something the rest of the world would much rather avoid. And Vivian for Reuters in Beijing. Welcome to our special focus on private equity in China. Holy Capital is very much a Chinese institution. One of its biggest investors is the country's social security fund, and it targets state-owned enterprises. I spoke to the company's CEO, Zhong Zhao, and asked him whether he's concerned about the growing competition from foreign funds. I'm not very worried about that. I'm Lee Lin, and this is Reuters.